cool. How's it going, my lovely, lovely friends? It's Devin here again with Make Anything, and I'm here with yet another 3D pen review. Yeah, we've got a lot. I know this is like a 3D printing channel, so most people are here for 3D printers, but you know, I'm trying to mix it up, keep it interesting. Besides, the pen we're looking at today is pretty different from all the rest. We are looking at the Creopop. And what's so special about this pen? Well, this is the first 3D pen that doesn't have a heating element. So you don't have any hot plastic coming out of the end. No, instead it's a UV curing resin. Hmm. Whether that's better or worse, I don't know. Let's find out. Just by the looks of this box, it kind of has a more professional feel. You know, we've got a sleek silver pen with some black acrylic. It looks fancier than the other pens, I think. All right, open it up. We've got some lovely pictures, people using the pen. And this comes with three different inks. So they're not filaments in this pen, they're inks. They come in a cartridge that's kind of a liquid or a gel, I guess. And as soon as that comes out of the pen, it's hit by UV light that should harden the resin. I'm really curious to see how quickly uh, the ink gets hardened as it comes out of the pen, because I think that could really make or break this product. Yeah, this starter kit comes with three of these inks. So if you want refills, a pack of three inks like this will cost you $19.99 on the Creopop website. And they have a few different varieties. They've got regular inks, but they also have inks with glitter in them. They have glow-in-the-dark inks. Um, color changing with temperature, aromatic, interesting stuff. Here's the pen. Looks really fancy. And one thing that I'm really excited about this is that it's battery powered. There's no plugs, besides when you're charging it. But once it's charged, you can take it wherever you want. So I'm definitely going to have to go on some adventures with this pen. So it also comes with the instruction manual, quick start guide. There's a little drawing mat here. It's kind of bent, but might have to use some putty and stick it down or tape it down or something to get it flat. But it's nice of them to include that. And there's also a little charging cable. I guess I'll charge it while I read the instructions and then I'll get back to you guys. All right, I'm back. I read through the quick start guide and I have to say, I wouldn't call this the most intuitive device, but uh, I'll show you how it works as I'm going along. But basically it has five lights here that you can use to indicate the speed and the different modes. And there are three modes on this pen. So the standard mode is the drawing mode, and that'll just have the ink come out with the UV curing lights on at the same time. So that should harden the ink while you're drawing. Now if you want to do large filled areas, you can also use a fill mode which doesn't cure the ink while you're drawing, so it kind of just creates a puddle of resin, and then you can switch to the light-only mode, and then go over everything with the light to harden it. Also, this thing needs to charge for two hours in order to use it cordless, so unfortunately, I can't just start running around with this thing just yet, but I've got it plugged in, so I'll be able to draw. Oh, also, the charging cable it comes with is pretty short, so I mean, you're not going to be able to plug this into a wall and draw on it unless you're on the floor or if you plug this into a laptop or something. But it is a standard USB micro, so I was able to use a different cable I have that's much longer. So I'll actually be able to draw stuff. All right, let's do this. I'm going to set down a drawing surface, tape down this little drawing mat, and we'll get started. I have no idea what Creopop is supposed to stand for. Except maybe just like, oh, create and pop, because popping is exciting. It is a kind of catchy name. I would like to know its origin. <laughs> Alright, there we go. So I have a nice flat mat, so this should make it a little easier to draw. With the inks, there are these silicone nozzles that you use on top of the ink cartridges. And those let you do different sizes of drawing. So there's some really tiny holes, there's some wider ones, and there's also this flat nozzle. I don't know if you can see those, but anyways, it's kind of cool. And hey, maybe one day I can 3D print my own nozzles. Here we go. 
And I'm guessing these are the indications on top that tell me what color I'm using. So this orange one, I'm gonna take off this little protective nozzle that comes with it. And then I'll put on just the standard nozzle to start with. So you put on that silicone nozzle. Then you can just unscrew the pen like that with a half twist. So you just go ahead and throw it in like that. The nozzle comes through the front. And then we can... Don't want to force this in. It looks like... It there we go. Alright, so now I'm going to press this power button up here. Lights are on, so I guess that means it's working. And I'm just going to try the standard drawing mode first. So to do that, you just hold this for a couple seconds, and then it'll continue coming out. And then once you press it again, it'll stop. So I'm holding it. Hmm. Nothing's happening. Let's try fill mode. I think you hold this down for fill mode. All right, that's working. Now I think you double click this. Oh, there we go. Double click that to get the light. So now you can just cure this. And how do we know when it's done? I don't know, I'm gonna use this little poker. It smells kind of funky. But hey, that's pretty cool looking light, huh? So for some reason, no, there we go. Now the drawing mode is working. Now, one thing that this apparently can do that other pens can't do is really draw, like, not straight up, but to the side. So let's see how that goes. Oh, well, it seems to be working. That's pretty awesome. Oh, where's the button again? <laughs> it's not stopping. Okay, I guess I should press that to stop it. Yeah, I was able to make it like actually go at an angle and horizontal while I was drawing. So, in that sense, it's more 3D than the other pens. So since this doesn't get hot, I figured I could try to fix this old, gnarled up iPod cable I have. It came with the original iPod Touch. Mine is also totally like wrecked. I'm still using it though, it still plays music. So yeah, let's try drawing uh, on top of this gnarled wire and see if we can fix it. Alright, so as you can see, um, it's not the neatest looking thing, but it seems really strong. I think for this purpose it works really well. That's kind of cool. I want to try switching out the filament, so let's try putting some blue in here. I think I should turn it off. <laughs> I already forgot what the instructions said, but let's hope that's okay. Where did I put that little protective nozzle? I really hope I didn't throw it away. Alright, I found it. It was in the packaging. Um, <laughs> So make sure you don't lose these little nozzles. Use the same nozzle and everything. Easy enough. Oh, I got this backwards again. <laughs> okay. So that was pretty quick to uh, switch it out. That's nice. So let's get some blue on here. Make it a little artistic at least. A good cable protector. Guess we'll move on and do it on the rest of this stuff. Pretty cool. Now this end is fine, but might as well do it. See, if I was using a, one of the other 3D pens, I would be hesitant to switch out so constantly because it's a little bit more effort. Here it's very simple to just switch it out. Just like, takes a couple seconds. See, that was really quick.
So there we go. As you can see, it's kind of blobby, but still pretty cool. Oh, and I can just like switch out the nozzle without even having to take out the cartridge. That's pretty cool. Boom, just like that. And we've got another size. It's definitely not as easy to do that on another pen. Also, I can make like a tactile indicator of what the front is. So I'll create like a kind of a little tab that comes out here. So now I'll be able to just like feel which side is the top of the cable. Because everyone knows how annoying it is to always plug a USB in the wrong way. Hey, this is the top. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Some wild cable protectors. <laughs> now the question is, should I fill this in? Dude, why not? Why not? Let's try out the flat nozzle. Where's that thing? Yeah, there's a cool flat nozzle here. And I'm just gonna try using the fill mode here so that one doesn't use the light. You can kind of use this as a little spatula. Kind of spread it in there. And then I'll just use the light mode and cure that. Boom. I fixed my broken iPod. That's not something I would have expected to do with a 3D pen. Interesting. Interesting. But I guess if you're looking at this pen, it's probably for artistic purposes. So let's try to create something more aesthetic. So since I made a lot of plants in other tutorials, I'm going to make another plant. This time I'm going to try making a little bonsai tree. I think that should show off the ability of this pen to make really thin structures that are hopefully more stable than the other 3D printing pens. So first I'm just filling in the whole bottom of this pot and that gives me something to stick onto. And then I can just start building up with the pen. And well, make sure it's cured enough because otherwise it'll break. To make it a little stronger, I did some coiling on the bottom of this branch, but really it's just a matter of making sure that you've had enough exposure to that UV light so that the ink hardens completely. So we've got the branches, and now I'm going to start adding leaves to the top of these branches. And since I don't have green, they're going to be blue. And basically, I'm just going to go from one branch to the next, hopping around, and just putting a bunch of little dots of ink. I think it's easier to work on all of the branches instead of just doing one at a time. That way, it kind of all grows at once, and you can get a feel for what you're making, since I'm kind of just doing this as I go along. Also, if you just covered one branch with a bunch of leaves, it might make it hard for the nozzle to reach the other branches. Ooh, that's cute. I guess I'll open up my red and we can add some little apples to this tree or fruits because I guess that's not how an apple tree looks, is it? Adding little dots and details like this are the things that turn a model from something kind of boring into a really interesting small piece. I'm not doing anything crazy difficult, it's just a lot of little things that, when you put them together, make a really cool model. As always with these 3D pens, I totally lost track of time. I don't know how long I've been working on this. Probably one or two hours. But it came out super nice. And I just love the transparency of these things. They really glow in the sunlight. All right guys, so to test the portability of this thing, I decided to bring it outside 
And we're gonna do something that I definitely couldn't do with the other pens. I'm gonna try to draw on this tree branch. I'm gonna make a little sloth. Um, so yeah, this is kind of loose, and I'm just gonna try to draw off of the branch. So this could be a huge failure, but if it works, I think it'll be pretty awesome. Now the kit doesn't come with a super portable way to carry all these little nozzles, and I already almost lost them a few times, so that's something that you really have to keep track of, all these little things. Luckily, I already had a Ziploc bag that I just used to carry these, and I've got the other inks in my pocket. So, the pen does, in fact, turn on. I'll set this to two speed and start by just wrapping this sloth hand around here. So we've got the big nozzle on here so it's going to come out really slowly. Slowly is usually a good way to start when you're doing something like this. Hopefully this doesn't poison this tree. It is an apple tree. I guess you won't be able to have any apples off of this particular branch. Uh oh. I guess it's not charged enough? Okay, I think I figured it out. So the pen, let's see if I turn the light on, as soon as I tilt it, it turns off. So I guess the pen has to be pointing downwards so that the ink can come through. Which is gonna make it a lot harder to draw on this branch because I was planning on doing it all upside down but I guess I have to do it right side up I'm still gonna give it a shot but no promises so I was still able to draw under the branch I just had to hold the pen horizontal and then it still works you just have to be careful not to go completely upside down but once I had that figured out I started working on the limbs and just brought them together and then I just slowly started adding thickness to the body and the head until I had some kind of resemblance of a sloth. I switched to the blue filament and added in some facial features, as well as the toenails and the stomach. But notice since it's transparent, the blue on top of the red kind of just turns into black or like a really dark looking ink. But I did finish and ended up with a little sloth hanging from the tree branch. Whoa, hello little guy. Oy, oy, oy. All right, as always with these 3D printing reviews, the sun is setting and I'm losing light. But I've gotta say the Creopop very interesting, very interesting. I think overall it's definitely tougher to use on the first go than the other pens I tried out, but it also does some very different things. I mean you guys saw what I made this time and you saw what I'm capable of with the other pens, so it's kind of up to you to decide what kind of a pen you want because they're pretty different, you know? The look of this ink is actually super cool. I mean the other pens have transparent filament as well but I don't think it would look quite the same as this. This looks more like something that would come out of an SLS printer, which is like, you know, it's a clear resin versus a, a plastic, so. You know, I mentioned at the start of the review that this is packaged more like something professional versus a kid's toy, and I think that was the right move. The ink is apparently non-toxic, but they still tell you not to put it in your eyes or mouth, and when you're touching things, the resin might not be completely hardened right away. So you do end up with some of that resin on your skin and it feels kind of oily. And you know, if you're a little kid and you're like, don't know better, you can end up rubbing your eyes or touching your mouth. The box doesn't really have a recommended age. It just says it's a choking hazard if you're three or under, which is standard. But I probably wouldn't recommend this to someone who's younger than like 10 years old. Still, this is a very unique pen. It's not anything like the other ones I played around with. You know, you can draw horizontally through the air, which is super cool. You can really draw more in thin air with this. You just have to have a really steady hand. I mean, with all of these 3D pens, I feel like a tattoo artist, you know? You gotta really, like, whew, you gotta have that steady hand. 
I love how easy it is to change out the inks here. You know, if I had a whole bunch of different ones, I would be swapping them like crazy and making super colorful things. So there is potential here. Hopefully I can play around with it some more in future videos and really see everything that it can do. But I hope for now you have a general idea about what this thing does and how it works, and I hope it helped you out. I've still got more pens that I'm gonna be testing out in future videos, so subscribe, stay tuned, let me know what you guys think about this pen in the comments. I'm interested in what you guys think about the projects I did today. Tell me how terrible my sloth looks. <laughs> Doesn't matter. I, I love hearing your guys' opinions. It helps me make better videos in the future. So, that's that. Alright, well, hopefully I'll see you next time. Until then, I'm Devin. This is Make Anything. Stay inspired.